Surrounding me now in the Salt Lake City Cemetery are the graves of descendants of Joseph Smith and their own family plot. And next to me is the most controversial grave in the cemetery, that of Chris Nemelka. And basically, Chris's claim to fame is that he is supposedly the reincarnation of Hiram Smith. And he arrived at this conclusion in 1987 when, as working as a security guard at the Salt Lake City Temple, he says he was approached by Joseph and Hiram Smith in the flesh, who let him know that he was a reincarnation, and further told him that he had a spiritual obligation to finish the work that Hiram started. Well, Chris, uh, Chris is an interesting guy. Um, there were some kind of really bad things that happened with Chris. Um, you know, in the beginning, Chris started out, uh, he, there was a friend of mine that had a couple of wives and, uh, and he was hanging around. So then Chris came along and then he kind of seduced, uh, this girl. And then he also seduced one of the wives of, uh, or the, the cousin, one of the wives of, of my friend. And so they ended up kind of going together, these two girls, and, uh, and Chris finally kind of abandoned the one, and the other one kind of still had children with and did things and, and all of that. Chris wrote, uh, according to the source that, of this gentleman that had lost these wives, Chris was in there and he was creating or writing this book. And he was, he was a very intelligent individual. And so he was doing research and he was writing this book up. And it was, uh, it was, you know, it was supposed to be the, the missing, lost, uh, or the, uh, the sealed, the sealed portion, yeah. And when he said, well, what work is that? Joseph told him that Hiram was actually working on a translation of the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. And to explain to my non-LDS friends what the sealed portion is, Joseph Smith was translating the Book of Mormon, and his friend, who was acting as a scribe, wanted to convince his wife, who was a skeptic, and Joseph Smith allowed him to take a transcript and give it to her. Well, the wife, who was being very skeptical, snatched out a couple pages and hid them, and said, well, if he's really translating it, he can just do it again. So God sealed that portion of the Book of Mormon, and it can now no longer be read. So essentially, because of this, apparently in secret, Hiram Smith was trying to retranslate it, but he was killed alongside Joseph Smith at the Carthage jail. So the reincarnation, Chris Nemelka, comes along and is told to translate it. And to do it, he cited Moroni 10.4 as a precedent for this translation. Moroni 10.4 says, And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that you would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true, and if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, and with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Basically, this means that Christomelka sat down and decided to create the sealed portion from just asking for spiritual revelation. And that's exactly what he did. And so uh, the irony is that, is that they came to me and wanted me to publish the book or print the book. And, and I'm, I'm kind of looking through this book and shaking my head and I go, I'll just print it for you. I'm not putting my name in or anything, you know, but, but you know, we, we did it and uh, we got the book published. Nobody else would publish it or print it. So, so we got the book out and, and I believe because of the intelligence of Chris, he had a lot of truths in there. There's a lot of interesting things that he had dug up and put together. But online, you know, he he avidly stated that he created the book to see how many people he could deceive. And so this is a, a pure, I did it because of this and this. And after he published it, a couple of members of Joseph Smith's family took to believing that he was the real reincarnation of Hiram Smith. And because of this, they gave him a plot here in the cemetery. Now, this immediately sparked outrage because a lot of people were accusing Chris Nemelka of being a huckster and trying to get money. In fact, Chris Nemelka has now opened a website for the new Illuminati where you can help join and create prosperity amongst the people. But essentially, Chris Nemelka, I've been told by some Mormon fundamentalist historians, he had some interesting ideas and they're worth reading, but he openly stated at a later date that he was just trying to uh, fool people, see how many people he could fool, and specifically see if he could fool descendants of Joseph Smith because their family gravitated a little bit towards the Reformed Latter-day Saints movement, the RLDS, instead of just the regular LDS. So he wanted to see if he could fool people, and he did it by 
creating this book. But I've been told by some people that, you know, he still believes that some of it is worth reading, that it's a revelation. In fact, his most interesting ideas are that um, God and Jesus, Jesus specifically was a man that is a very faithful man and does not necessarily want to be worshipped, and that you should treat your neighbors as the gods they are, that essentially everybody is a god unto themselves, and that the main messages of the universe are love yourself and treat your neighbors as the gods they are. I have an avid friend that really likes the book and likes Chris, and he says, oh, there was, there was a group that, of really intelligent people that said he was just put up to do that, you know, so it was still a true book. So it's it's worth reading, but it's not the final truth. I think it's a mixture of all different truths and him trying to possibly deceive a group of people. That, that's my belief. What because I, he said that he came from sources, so why was he writing it? That's the question. Truly. I, this? I heard from one of the ex-Mormon Facebook pages that Chris wrote it to see if he couldn't deceive the families of a couple of Joseph Smith's descendants and get a grave on their plot. Have you seen his grave? Oh yes, that's true. That was part of it. Yeah. It, it seems like a, a prank, and yeah. apparently they keep knocking it over, but he keeps rebuilding it. Yeah. Does he actively run a church anymore? Well, I think he believes... No, Chris... Chris, uh, I think Chris believed that he was the reincarnated to Hiram Smith. I think that was how it went. Yeah. It says it on his grave. Yeah. It, it marks it as the grave of Hiram Smith. Yeah. He's got his website on there, too, and right. it's talking about the new Illuminati and how you can join the new Illuminati by going to his website. It redirects you. Ah, interesting. <laughs> He's a fun guy. Lots of, lots of interesting stories of Chris, you know. Um, and so that was kind of how that went down, and there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff. I have, a, I have a lot of people who followed that path. I personally don't believe in that path. I think that there's issues, as you can tell. And he's in an empty grave here, and apparently when he dies, he's going to be buried right alongside the descendants of Joseph Smith. 